Hi everyone, it is May 9, 2019. So much is happening. My God, it is overwhelming. It is head spinning. How quickly the world is changing into a very, very dark, evil dystopia. Well, here we go. China's big brother, social control goes to Australia. Wow. The Chinese Communist Party, you know, that social credit system, they're rolling it out in Australia. In Darwin, Australia, they've already constructed poles fitted with speakers, cameras, and Wi-Fi to monitor people, their movements around the city, the website they visit, and what apps they use. The monitoring will be done mainly by artificial intelligence, but will alert authorities based on set triggers. Just as in China, the surveillance system is being branded as a smart city program, and the smart cities all over the world, well, this is what we're going to be living. While Australian officials claim its operations are benign, They've announced it functions to monitor cell phone activity and virtual fences, virtual fences that will trigger alerts if people cross them. Wow. Well, they don't define what a virtual fence is, so you could cross them unknowingly. Uh, we'll be getting sent an alarm saying there's a person in this area that you've put a virtual fence around, boom, an alert goes out to whatever authority, whether it's us or police, to say, look at camera five. Oh my God. Nature, the nature of the virtual fences and what type of activity will sound an alarm still isn't being made clear. The system is being promoted as mostly benign and stupid people who will not do any kind of research or flip on that critical thinking switch in their brain that clearly many people all over the world have turned off, uh, well, they'll just believe, oh, it's benign and it's for our own good and it's going to protect us and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it will tell the government where people are using Wi-Fi, what they're using Wi-Fi for, or uh, I mean, are they watching YouTube, etc.? All these bits of information we can share with businesses. We can let businesses know, hey, 80% of people actually use Instagram within this area of the city between these hours. That's how they're selling it. The Communist Party in China, the social credit system, is able to monitor each person in the society tracking every element of their lives, including their friends, online purchases, daily behavior, and other information, and assigns each person a citizen score that determines their level of freedom in society. The tool is a core piece of China's Communist Party's programs to monitor and persecute dissidents, including religious believers and people who oppose the ruling party in China. It's a new form of tyranny meant to reactivate China's totalitarian hold on society. In the past, there was Nazi totalitarianism and Mao Zedong's totalitarian system, but a totalitarian system powered by the Internet and contemporary technology never existed before, and it's dark, and it's evil, and it's gonna, it really is going to destroy so many people. I mean, China's blacklist has over a million people on it from the social credit system that they have. They can't travel, they can't get work. Uh, it's <laughs> any, any Western democracy, quote unquote, uh, that is establishing this kind of system. All the people in that uh, society, you really need to question what is taking place. You know, the local officials 
in Darwin made a friendship deal with China in 2018. A friendship deal. Uh, it's part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, that followed a previous deal between Darwin and the Communist Party in China in which the city signed a 99-year lease of the port of Darwin to a Chinese company and the Communist Party. Deals also should raise concern for U.S. Marines stationed in Darwin whether the uh, Communist Party in China is able to monitor data collected on their cell phones from its systems in the area. Under a 2011 deal between the United States and Australia, the U.S. troops will be there from 2040. The decision of Australia to begin implementing China's social credit system for totalitarian social control represents a major development in communist China's model push. And communist China views Australia as a testing ground for programs it wants to spread to the West. After Australia comes Canada, then the United States, in an apparent imitation of Mao Zedong's strategy to surround the cities with the countryside. Okay, well, Freedom House. Uh, China-style digital authoritarianism grows globally. And guess what? It's operating here under the radar. I will link below to all of these articles that I'm going to be working through, but I, I just want you to listen to this. So surprised to see conservative thinkers like James Woods banned from Twitter and Paul Watson banned from Facebook. Donald J. Trump retweeted your tweet. Thank you, Mr. President. Very cool. But while tweets are nice, we need action. A handful of giant corporations have seized control of the new public square and are digitally disappearing dissidents. The first rule of Facebook is don't talk about anyone who Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like Otherwise, you'll be banned by Facebook. This isn't a joke. It's literally their new policy. They're not just banning people. They're dictating the opinions that everyone on the platform is allowed to have. Merely appearing in a photo or a video with someone who Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like is now enough to get you banned. This is virtually identical to the communist Chinese social credit score system, but instead it's controlled by giant corporations with more power than some countries. Except at least in China it's written down so you know how to stay in compliance. How dangerous is InfoWars? Well, Facebook believes it's so dangerous that you can be banned from using the platform, Facebook, just for sharing its content unless you simultaneously denounce it. Let that penetrate for just one moment. Think about it, just for a second. Mark Zuckerberg is not simply censoring opinions. He's prescribing which political opinions you're allowed to have which conversations all of us in this country can have about America. Keep in mind that nobody voted for Mark Zuckerberg. He's 34 years old. He's completely cut off from reality. He's worth $72 billion. And yet he can single-handedly make our First Amendment irrelevant after 250 years. I mean, how tragic is it that Snoop Dogg, who encouraged his 32 million followers to flood Facebook and Instagram with Louis Farrakhan videos, has a better grasp of the principle of freedom of speech than 90% of journalists. The same journalists who whine about Trump targeting the media then pop champagne corks when anyone on the right gets silenced. This has nothing to do with hate, whatever that means. This is about you beginning to lose the argument culturally and politically. So instead of trying to engage on a level playing field and, I don't know, actually doing some work, you merely silence the dissent. This is classic authoritarianism. I want them shut down, I want them silenced, I want them muted. I want them shut down, I want them silenced. This is the rhetoric of authoritarian tyrants. Yet yeah, we're the dangerous ones. Really? This isn't my private company enforcing its arbitrary and ever-changing rules. Virtually every prominent online personality who helped get Trump elected has now been banned on some or all social media platforms. Do you think that's a coincidence? 
Or is it a political purge? Oh, and isn't it great how Facebook has banned all these dangerous extremists while still leaving people free to surf Hamas and Hezbollah pages? Facebook is the establishment and knows popular dissent is keeping establishment candidates out of office. 2016 was the turning point and showed that an anti-establishment figure like Trump could win. So they're silencing populist voices ahead of 2020. Here's what needs okay, so, um, to happen. Pla I just want to say that I, and you know, it's remarkable because in the back of my mind are the subscribers who now unsub, I can't believe that you're saying this about Trump. I just got a, a comment underneath one of my Trump videos and, and the person was saying, I know that you are absolutely wrong. And everything that you are showing is just simply a lie. You go with this mainstream media. Uh, and so many, I, I went through that video. I looked at all of the articles and s there were, uh, yeah, articles about what Trump is doing and they were not mainstream. And you know what? People with their confirmation bias that they just never, ever want to even think about consider that maybe it's operating in their brain and try to you know become aware of it so that you can step back and objectively look instead of subjectively picking the information that you want that satisfies what you believe your opinion to hell with facts and evidence yada 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 um, and so you know I could see people leaving comments well I can't believe that you're you know you played that video. Um, these people support Trump. Aren't you contradicting? No, I am not. This is about freedom of speech. Uh, that some of these people mentioned in this video and Paul, uh, Joseph Watson, they may support Trump or, you know, whatever. I don't care. They should not be banned. Everybody has the right, the inherent right, to speak their mind. And when we see that inherent right being squashed, especially by people like Zuckerberg, <laughs> uh, that's when we all need to band together and make... <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe how many people are actually like that woman that he showed, you know, shut them down, shut them down. That woman, I, I, how, how, how is it possible that people in this country, Americans are saying that, shut them down. Don't let them speak their mind. It's scary how many Americans do not understand what they're doing, understand, you know, that you're going to get affected by it too. Eventually you'll be shut down. Don't you understand that? Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Authoritarian, authoritarianism grows globally and I'm going to show you how it's growing. Just look at this and I really do recommend bookmarking technocracy along with mass privatel, which I'll get to in a moment, but when you, the, I, this is today on technocracy. The Guardian is China style surveillance coming to the West. It's already here in a lot of respects. The future of surveillance is about behaviors, not faces, and that's absolutely true. The Internet of Things. Privacy concerns grow as the Internet of Things devices light up. A lot of very good articles on this site that affects us all. It affects us all. So, China's terrifying surveillance state looks a lot like America's future, the Silicon Valley. Yes, the idealist of Silicon Valley. Technology promises greater freedom, but in China, innovation is shepherding in an authoritarian hellscape. How could these Silicon Valley idealists think 
that this technology is providing greater freedom when we all know that uh, that freedom is close to gone. When we have these platforms, Facebook and Google and YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and they're literally banning people who have the kind of opinion that they don't want shared. Well, something's very wrong with that kind of thinking. Yeah, well, let's see. Are you afraid of Google? Blackberry co-founder says you should be. And this was posted April 10, 2019. So many people are coming out saying, whoa, man, technology it's going in a really bad direction here and we need to start paying attention and maybe taking some action to prevent these uh, technocrats from taking over every aspect of our life because that is where it's going. Now Google tracks your location and shares it with the police even when your phone is off. Google knows exactly where you are and they can send that information to the police and they have been doing it. They have been doing it. Uh, the secret trust scores companies use to judge us all. Now I've posted videos on this. We already have a trustworthiness score. We know about the credit card score that is preventing a lot of people from renting apartments because they don't have that number that apartment complexes are saying you can rent or you can't based on a number. Doesn't have anything to do with your reputation, prior rental history, whether or not you have a job. It all comes down to that score. Uh, I just heard something from a tenant who has a vacant apartment next to him and he, when he was paying his rent, he said to the property manager, please make sure that you, you know, fill that apartment with somebody who, you know, is not, he actually said not someone on crack because he lived in uh, Miami and he had neighbors who were crack addicts. They turned his life into a complete nightmare. All he was saying is just please make sure that these people are, you know, good tenants. You know what the property manager said? If they have the score, you know, that, that uh, states that they're credit worthy, that's all that's necessary. Wow. Okay. So when you're logging into a Starbucks account, booking an Airbnb, or making a reservation on OpenTable, loads of information about you is crunched instantly into a single score, then evaluated along with other personal data to determine if you're a malicious bot or potentially risky human. Are you a potentially risky human? Behavior. They're collecting data on our behavior. So services like SIFT. SIFT, more than 16,000 signals inform the SIFT score. A rating of 1 to 100 used to flag devices, credit cards, and accounts owned by humans, companies, any entity uh, that a company might want to block. This score is like a credit score, but for overall trustworthiness. Social credit system in China operating here in the United States, you just don't know it. There's no way to find out what your score is. So how many of us realize our account behaviors are being shared with companies we've never heard of in the name of security? Why can't we access any of this data ourselves to update, correct, or delete? Because it's not about that. It's about 
marginalizing people, pushing them over the cliff. All right, well, another score, CLV, on hold for 45 minutes. It might be your secret customer score. Two people call customer service at the same time to complain about the same thing. One waits a few seconds, the other one stays on hold for eternity. Why the difference? There's a good chance it has something to do with a rating known as a customer lifetime value or CLV. It's a secret number used by companies to measure the potential financial value of their customers. Your score can determine the prices you pay, the products, ads you see, the perks you receive. The more profitable you are, the better service you will get. Companies are resorting to all sorts of data and scores to size up um, consumers and predict their behavior. Everyone with a bank account, cell phone, or online shopping habit has at least one CLV score. So you just thought everybody was hanging out, waiting forever for customer service to finally pick up? No. Your score is low. Apple gives users a secret trust score based on their calls and emails. Apple has begun giving secret trust scores to users based on how they use their devices. Firms, uh, the firm said that it has begun tracking the number of phone calls and emails sent and received from iPhones and Apple TVs to create a measure of trustworthiness. Yay! Well, that's what China's social credit system is all about trustworthiness, the trustworthiness of their citizens well. Here, San Diego has been turned into a massive Chinese-style public surveillance network. Oh, covert financial recognition streetlights coming to a city near you. Now, this is uh, a while ago. Um, this isn't new news, but streetlights, they're spying on you. You can read all of the um, the blue lighting is hyperlinks, so you can click on these hyperlinks to get to articles. City IQ streetlights listen to everyone in San Diego. They listen. They watch. How's your behavior? Oh, they don't care about your face. They care about how you're behaving. San Diego police sharing license plate data with 600 federal agencies. San Diego created a public watch listing network based on behavior. And Detroit is America's second city that has a Chinese style surveillance over the people in Detroit. Uh, they have in Telly Streets, a company known to have strong ties to Homeland Security. And they have a voluntary police cam share program in Saginaw, Michigan. That has morphed into a massive 1,000 surveillance camera network, which includes 500 businesses. Uh, they're Detroit's project Green light, it spies on people in real time at gas stations and retail stores and public housing all over. All over. This is what is now going on. This was posted May 7, two days ago. Offended by what someone said, now you can report them to law enforcement. Wow, it's a hate incident reporting system. Free speech? It's going, baby. It's going and going and gone. Digit Labs, hate incident reporting app, promises to turn complete strangers into secret hate speech bias spies. What you say if you're sitting next to someone and they hear it, and they think it's hate speech, they report you. This is our world now. Gone 
are the days when Americans were unafraid to voice their opinions or make snide comments in public because digit labs will turn smartphones into bias reporting devices. Yay! The first of its kind. This app will make swearing at a fellow motorist or flipping someone off hate speech or, well, you support Trump, they report you as a Nazi. Uh, this is a very scary world. And unfortunately, there are so many people around the world but certainly Americans, who are scaredy cats. And once they realize there's an app and somebody could be reporting them for hate speech, they'll shut up. They'll shut up instead of speaking loudly, more loudly, which is what everybody needs to be doing. Cities are tracking everyone's cell phone signal um, if you, if ever you needed a reason to turn off your cell phone, uh, maybe this story will convince you. The Palm Beach Post recently revealed how the city of Palm Beach, Florida, wants to track everyone's cell phone. The idea is to analyze where downtown visitors go, what shops, what public places, and at what time, and how they get there. The city could use it to study traffic flow and gauge the impact of changes it makes to the streetscape, while merchants could use the data to strategize to improve businesses. Really? Big Brother. It's Big Brother. It's here. It ain't going away. And it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. The noose is going to just keep closing in on our neck. Alexa wants to spy on your family's health. If ever there was a red flag story about Amazon's Alexa, then this is it. If you watch the Alexa for medical care advice video posted above, you will hear Alexa asking Peggy, tell me about the symptoms or problems that are troubling you the most. Divulging your health issues to a private corporation is extremely troubling, as you will see. Let's start with the obvious concerns and talk about something you will not see in the video, like Peggy telling Alexa, it's none of Amazon's business what our health concerns are, and Alexa should stop listening to everything she says. But many Americans do not have an issue with Alexa listening to everyday conversations. I challenge anyone to walk up to a stranger while recording the conversation and ask them about their health issues and see what happens. If you really want to see what happens, ask them about their kids' health issues. Would anyone like to guess how many would respond telling them about their health issues? So why would anybody tell Alexa their personal health issues? Alexa can now call pharmacies, spy on kids, and your blood sugar. Alexa Healthcare does much more than just transmit and receive healthcare information. Um, you can read, look, if you have a few brain cells working in your brain, you will understand that this could be extremely dangerous and work against you. So you have insurance and that data is then sold to your insurance company and now they know all of the symptoms that you have and those symptoms, well, it could be cancer, it could be, it could be anything but your insurance, suddenly you get a letter, you're canceled. All right, um, if you go over and take a look at Mass Privatile, which I do believe that you should bookmark along with technocracy, you will see um, some incredible uh, information here. 
it's police state madness, cops and DUI vans drawing motorists, motorists' blood. If you control people's words, you can control their thoughts. Police use drones to spy on suspicious people at potential crime scenes. Alexa wants to spy on your family's health. Oh. In, uh, unbelievable. Chief Deputy claims airbag deployment smelled like marijuana. The Feds, 9,000 opportunity zones will allow law enforcement to spy on 35 million people. And yeah, <laughs> okay, we've got finger vein vending machines and a global biometric police database. What? Gone are the days when you could just use a slug to purchase a can of soda because today's vending machines will know who you are and your criminal record before you purchase an item. It's the American Green Vending Machine. It uses finger vein readers to identify each customer. Wow! Are we in trouble? We are in trouble. All right, just four more articles. Um, Amazon has no limit on how it can listen to and store private conversations. There is no limit to how Amazon is storing and listening to private conversations, adding that these recordings could potentially be used against you in a court of law or for other purposes. If you're having a conversation in front of Alexa, Amazon is not guaranteeing you any privacy. Wow. Well, there are thousands of people listening to Alexa recordings. A global team reviews audio clips in an effort to help the voice activated assistant respond to commands. Yes, that's what Amazon says. Well, we're just trying to make Alexa work better. Really, tens of millions of people use smart speakers and their voice software. Well, teams are listening to voice recordings captured in Echo owners' homes and offices. The recordings are transcribed, annotated, and then fed back into the software as part of an effort to eliminate gaps in Alexa. However, when you see, hey, Amazon working with law enforcement and they're turning over some of that information that they have collected over to law enforcement, you really think that they're not turning over audio recordings from Alexa and Echo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Epic alleges Google may be helping U.S. government conduct warrantless searches. Wow. One of the core underpinnings of U.S. society is that all individuals are protected from unlawful search and seizure, uh, seizing of their private property. Yeah, it's in that Fourth Amendment. We don't have a constitution. We are no longer the United States that we used to think we live in. You used to think we lived in. Even then, it was taken over. But it's gone. There is no United States. So for everybody who's still stuck in that matrix going, Trump, yay, 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 or worse, no, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. You know, oh, Biden, yay, or Sanders, yay. You're so stuck in the matrix, you ain't going to get any help. And they're not going to be returning this country to the way it used to operate not too long ago. It's gone. It's gone. The silence of Americans. That was what killed us. And can we possibly get it back? Well, <laughs> that would take millions of Americans to not only wake up, 
to not only step outside the matrix, but to begin to activate, get involved in their communities, get rid of your corrupt officials, and begin to uh, you know, return this country to that constitutional republic that it used to be. You need state governors to assert their power. You need uh, those governors and state legislators to rid themselves of the federal government. The federal government dictates, which means ridding them of all the federal funding that they're getting. Big job, uh, but most people you now don't want to do anything. So, Google, of course, it's spying on us. Here, corporate surveillance monitors workers every move. The emergence of sensors and other technologies let business track, listen, and even watch employees while on company time. Well, it's raising concern about corporate levels of surveillance. Those sensors are so tiny. They could be anywhere in your office, and they're recording you and watching you. All links are below.